Hello and welcome to lesson 3-3. Sorry I cannot be with you this morning, so I am doing a quick recording um, so that we can keep moving forward. The lesson today, as you can see, is about function notation. And our essential question would be, how do I use function notation? So get that jotted down. Function notation is actually a really useful thing in math. It is a shortcut uh, way of, of asking questions and noting uh, information. So when we look at our success criteria, it says I can use function notation to evaluate and interpret functions. We're going to look at that today. And I can use function notation to solve and graph functions. Also, what real life problems can we use function notation on? Of course, there's some terminology that we need to pay attention to on this. So the notation f of x, and if you have a highlighter, why don't you highlight that? The notation f parentheses x parentheses is called function notation. One might think that f stands for function, and in a sense it does, but we also can use other um, variables or letters. Often f, g, and h are used for function notation. It's just another name for y, like y equals, I can say f of x equals, okay? And you're like, well, that's not shorter. It isn't, but wait till you see what it, what it also can do. The notation f parentheses x parentheses is read as f of x. So that's how we pronounce that. Or the value of f at x. It does not mean f times x, okay? So that, make sure you realize it's not a, not a multiplication symbol there. It's just f of x or f evaluated at x. f can be replaced with other letters such as g, h, j, and k to name a function. So um, we'll see some of that in our work today where we use various letters instead of just f. Useful information to help understand this section's concepts. First off, a linear function cannot only be written in the form y equals mx plus b, but we could replace it with with uh, replace the y with the f of x and end up with it looking like f of x equals y equals or what am I saying f of x equals mx plus b in my head I wanted to say you know compare it to y equals mx plus b f of x replacing the y value f of x represents the output of a function just like y was an output f of x is an output of the function with the corresponding value with input x. So when I put in an x, we know we can come out with a y. When I put in an x, I can come out with f of x. So example number one, let's maybe off in the side column, just to draw attention to it, that these are very synonymous. Okay, function notation. Example one, evaluate f of x equals negative 4x plus 7 when x is 2 and when x is negative 2. So they're giving us two problems here. We're going to take that function, we're going to evaluate it at 2 and at negative 2. So I'm going to say eval, uh, maybe I'll just do that, eval at x equals 2. What would that look like in function notation? Let me move that up a bit. In function notation, it's going to say f, and I'm going to put the number 2 inside my parentheses instead of the x, and then it's going to be negative 4, and I'm going to replace that x with the number 2 plus 7. If you have different colored pen and pencil or something like that this morning, um, use a different color to accentuate the fact that we substituted 2 in for x. 
draw an analogy to this f of x equals negative 4x plus 7. This is the general rule, isn't it? It's telling us what to do to x. This is the general rule. Now this gets very specific. <laughs> we want to evaluate the equation when x is 2. Notice how this is kind of a shorthand um, notation. All right, so now coming down here, I can say f of 2 equals, do the math, negative 8 plus 7. Oh, f of 2 comes out to be, you're right, negative 1. f of negative 2. Let's do that one. Okay, I'm going to use a highlighter. I'm going to put in negative 2. So I'm evaluating now at x equals negative 2. If you like to write that, eval at x equals negative 2. Here we go. So f of negative 2 is equal to, I got to look at my rule. The general rule says negative 4 times that value of x. Our value of x is negative 2, so I put negative 2 right there. Highlight it, show the substitution. And now let's do the math. Negative 4 times negative 2 produces positive 8 plus 7. And that's going to tell me that f of negative 2 equals 15. From this, I can really glean that the ordered pair is negative 2, 15. This was our x value of negative 2. Our output was the y value. Okay. So I love no, uh, function notation. Very easy to understand. It gives us a lot of information really concisely. Now, you have the on your own, and it says locate the points x, f of x on the graph. Explain how you found each point. Well, here's our general rule. Let's just write that above it. There's our general rule. And then I'm going to come over here to A, and it's saying let x be negative 1, and then let's figure out what y is. So if x is negative 1, I'm going to do f of negative 1 equals, follow my general rule, I substitute something in for x. What do I substitute in for x? Negative 1. And looks like the answer, did I get to... Oh, there is two negatives. Uh, the rule had a negative, and then we were evaluating at negative 1. So negative, negative makes positive 1. 1 plus 3 sounds like 4. So we put in negative 1, and we got out 4 right there. What about 0? Let x be 0. F. Let's do a different color here so you can see it. F of 0 equals... Follow the general rule. My eyes went over here. You couldn't see my eyes because they don't get recorded, do they? But my eyes were looking there. Okay, so I plug in 0 because it said evaluate our function at 0, and I'm going to get out 3. f of 0 is 3. Does that tie into our, our linear function there? It sure does. Um, why don't you take a moment, hit pause on this video, and calculate out C and D, and then come back and see if you're right. Okay, my answers. I had F of 1 was 2, and I had F of 2 was 1, and I went over to the graph to see if that tied in. When X was 1, yep, we came out with a height of 2, didn't we? And when X was 2, we came out with a height of 1. So, ties in nicely. Let's go... To um, notes, mm, yeah, we'll come back to that page 13 in a moment. Let's do these notes, and then we'll be back over to page 13. Example 2 says, let f of x be the outside temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, t hours after 6 a.m. Explain the meaning of each statement. Well, on function notation, I can tell the independent variable real easily because it will be inside the function notation. So f of x, it allows us to see real clearly the independent variable. Make this over in your left-hand column just so it draws your attention. 
f of x, x is our independent variable. And then f is actually our output, isn't it? Explain the meaning of each statement. Okay, so for here, t is our independent variable, and t represents hours after 6 a.m. Okay, this will make more sense as we get down into the work. But maybe just note that t is hours after 6 a.m. Highlight it if you wish. Now, when I look at this function notation, it draws my attention to the zero. And since t is my independent variable, t is set at zero. What time would this be then? If it's zero hours after 6 a.m., this would indicate to me then that we are at 6 o'clock a.m. The output, um, the output is going to be degrees Fahrenheit, isn't it? Let's write output on that. 58 is my output. It's degrees Fahrenheit. So at 6 o'clock a.m., the temperature was, what was it? 58 degrees. Ooh, we haven't been that warm lately, have we? Definitely becoming fall in Minnesota. We don't get temperatures of 58 degrees at 6 a.m. very often anymore. All right, let's move on to B. What is the T value? T equals 6, isn't it? I can get that out of the function notation. The output, well, this is 6 hours after 6 a.m. 6 after 6 a.m., isn't it? What time does that draw us to? I'm going to write just a.m. What time would that be? Well, 6 hours beyond, if I have a clock, and here is 6 a.m., and I go around 6 hours, it's going to take me to noon, won't it? This would be noon time. So... How would we interpret this? We would say, at noon, the temp was, oh, n, n degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Doesn't give us a lot of information, whatever n is. Okay, let's look at C. We got a T value of 3, and we have a T value of 9. From 6 a.m., Taking 6 a.m. down here, and I move three hours. One, two, three. I'm going to be at 9 a.m., aren't I? Three hours expired, and I'd be at 9 a.m. So when t is three, t is three, <laughs> um, that correlates to 9 a.m. And then nine hours, I got to go six more, don't I? There's three more, and another three. So I stopped at noon and I picked up more 3. Oh, we'd be at 3 p.m. Okay, so at t equals 9, we are at 3 p.m. Now let's interpret the function notation. It's got an inequality on it. So it says that this temperature is less than that temperature. The temp, not sure what I was spelling there, the temp at 3 p.m., which was when t was 9, is greater than the temp at, at 3 it was, oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. The temp at 3 p.m., which was 9, oh boy, these numbers are kind of funky, aren't they? is greater than the temp at 9 a.m., which correlated to T being 3. Why did they do that to us? That was not nice. Threes and nines. All right. Example 3. For h of x equals 2 thirds x minus 5, and find the value of x for which h of x equals negative 7. Well, h of x, this is indicating an output value of negative 7. That's what I'm gleaning from that. So now I'm going to come over here and substitute 
negative 7 for that h of x in our equation. Okay, so negative 7 equals 2 thirds x minus 5. And now we're back into chapter 1 stuff where we solved equations. Let's add and subtract stuff first. Undo our order of operations. So I'm going to be coming down with 2 thirds x equals negative 7, positive 5 is a 2. Now undo this multiplication. I like to multiply by the reciprocal. You've seen me do that a few times because it's efficient, isn't it? 2 goes into 2, 3 goes into 3, leaves us just x. And here, oh, we get a cancellation of the 2s there. Looks like x equals 3. Find the value of x for which h of x equals negative 7. I could also write h of 3 turned out to be negative 7, just inserting that 3 for the x. Example number 4. Let me push that back up in case some people are still writing. Example 4. Given a linear function, because this really is like y equals mx plus b, so this is a linear function. We know it should graph out like a line. Let's pop in our values and see what we come up with. So 2 times, you know what, I'm going to do it over here. 2 times negative 2 plus 5 equals negative 4 plus 5. I'm coming up with 1. And then I could do f of 0. This one was f of negative 2 f of 0. I come back to this formula, don't I? 2 times 0 plus 5 gets us 5. f of 0 is 5. You take a moment and do f of 2. Maybe you already have. Hope this is what you wrote down. I wrote down 2 times 2 plus 5 4 plus 5 is 9. f of 2 is 9. And then we just want to go plot those points. Negative 2, 1. 0, 5. 2, 9. Hopefully, they line up. We'll consider this continuous data since it was a linear function. And we just had three nice little points to track us along the line. All right, now back to 13. Page 13, they have you do these two problems. See if you can um, complete that table for number one. I gave you three numbers that I would check out and see if you can do that. I'm going to pause and remember you're doing like f of negative four, plugging it into this formula, two times negative four minus 5, and then record that answer. Then go after f of 0 and go after f of 3. If you have time, move on to g of x. Maybe just use the same values. Let's just do negative 4, 0, and 3 again and see what your g of x comes out at. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, here's my answers. Hopefully they match with yours. I did connect the dots because it's a linear function in both of these cases. Um, you can see my work where I was in, uh, inserting or substituting negative 4, 0, and 3, getting those values of negative 13, negative 5, 1, plotted them out. Yeah, I had to extend down below. Negative 13 fell off my chart didn't, or off my graph, but that's okay. And then for g of x, these are the values I came out with. The one that was maybe a little tricky was the negative negative 4, which made positive 4. Positive 4 minus 1 gave us a 3. And then graph, this is just coming in from the image that we grabbed off of the internet. So ignore that dot over there. All right, what do we have left? We have um, example 5, I think, is our last one. And... Um, We'll whip through that. Example five. The graph shows the number of, of miles a helicopter is from its destination. Okay. So let's just quickly read that again. Number of miles 
from its destination after X hours. So at zero time frame, we are how many miles away from our destination? We're 300 miles away, aren't we? So we have the zero 300 um, ordered pair. On its second flight, the helicopter travels 50 miles farther and increases its speed by 25 miles per hour. For this, they give us the equation. 350 minus 125 um, represents the second flight. Yep, they were 50 miles further, so that's how we get to the 350. Originally, we were 300 miles away on first flight, but now we're 50 miles further away, so we're at 350. And it, it goes 25 miles an hour faster than flight one. Um, so flight one, we must have been going 100 miles an hour, huh? This represents the second flight where f of x is the number of miles the helicopter is from its destination. Which flight takes less time? So I can see, can you read the chart here and see how long it took to get to its destination? How long did it take it to travel those 300 miles? Three hours, didn't it? At three hours time, it was zero miles away from its destination. So three hours, zero miles away versus zero hours and 300 miles away. That was flight one. So basically it took us three hours on flight one. On flight two, it says that we have f of x equals 350 minus 125x. And I want to know how long it takes to get to our destination. So I'm going to say I'm zero miles away from my destination, which means I have arrived. Equals 350 minus 125x. And let's solve for x. Okay, so we're going to solve for x. Let me move this up a little bit so it isn't so far so low down. First thing I think I would do is undo addition and subtraction. So we're going to add 125x to each side. That'll clear it from the right side, moves it over to the left side, doesn't it? Okay, what's the next step? Well, this is held together using multiplication, so undo it using division. You got it. 125 clears, leaves us a single x, 1x, but we usually don't write the 1. And now, with your handy-dandy calculators, throw it in there. After doing that, I came up with 100, or, whew, I was reading 125, 2.8 hours. It took 2.8 hours to arrive at our destination. Even though we were further miles away, we went at a faster speed. So I would say flight two takes less time. And then they've got a little chart for us to fill in with the 350 one, uh, minus 125. And we probably were actually supposed to do this first. And then we could see that we were 100 miles away. And at three hours, we were minus 25. We had gone beyond our destination, hadn't we? We had gone 25 miles beyond destination. Um, so I would plot 0, 350. At 1, we were 225, so about a quarter of the way up. At 2, we were 100 miles out. And then at 3, we were 25 miles beyond the destination. Okay? Perfect. Hey, the homework is in the packet. I'm going to skip the my turn stuff, and let's just go to this, and you can work on, on this. Hopefully you have good luck. I'll see you in class tomorrow.